Now, the religions, however, bring different understandings, different answers to those questions. For example, let's take question number one, the meaning of life. Some years ago, I was taking a university class in Nairobi, Kenya, to a Hindu ashram. And here were these Hindu swamis who were teaching us for an afternoon, this university class, the essence of Hinduism. And in the middle of that discussion, one of them turned to me and said, your life, Dr. Shank, is a tragic accident that should have never happened. I said, what? Yes, a tragic accident that should have never happened. Well, I said, my mother didn't believe that. <laughs> my mother was very pleased when I was born. She didn't think I was, and my father too, they did not think I was a tragic accident. They would say, you've got it wrong. No, I said, you you know. <laughs> See, that's the Hindu answer to the question. You know, within Hinduism, teaches that we're on a cycle of birth and rebirth. And we go round and round and round and round and round and round. For what purpose? For no purpose at all. Being on that cycle of birth and rebirth is a tragic accident that should not have happened, you see. So that's an answer to the ultimate question. Go to a Hindu guru. You say, what's the purpose of life? I tell you, sir, a tragic, a tragic accident should not have happened. And so all of Hinduism has to do with attempting to, to correct this accident by ceasing to be, the cessation of being. That, that would correct the accident if you can cease being, stop being, you see. So my friends say, some of them, oh, Shank, we're very grateful that you study world religions and that you travel around the world teaching about world religions. That's very nice. And to help students understand that all the religions are basically the same. They all say the same thing. It's so good to know that that's what you're teaching everywhere you go. I say, I'm sorry, I'm not teaching that. Just for example, the Hindu answer to the question, why are you here, is not the Christian answer to that question. What does the gospel say about that question? What does it say? Why are you here? Why are you here? My dentist is not a Christian. And recently I was in the dental office and he said, I saw in the newspaper you will be preaching tonight in a big church. I said, that's right. He said, what will you pre be preaching about? I said, I will be preaching about the meaning of life. Oh, he said, that's a silly topic. Nobody knows the meaning of life. It's all a tragedy. My dentist, he doesn't know the meaning of life. So I tried to talk to him while he has this instrument in my mouth. Come on, Shaq, there's no meaning of life, is there? <laughs> Are you? No, there is meaning. No, you? <laughs> so it was a very difficult conversation with him having the instruments in my mouth. <laughs> but I hoped that I shocked him by saying there is purpose in life. What about the Muslim answer to the second question? The meaning, uh, uh, the meaning of, um, of death. What do our Muslim friends say about that? Ah, they say there is a balance scales. And the good you do goes on one side of the scales and the wrong you do goes on the other side of the scales. And there are two angels. And the angels are perched on your shoulders, one on this shoulder 
one on the shoulder. And when you do your prayers the way you should, then the angels check that off. David Schenk said his prayers five times today like he should. If I miss my prayers, then the angel on the other side checks that off. David Schenk did not say his prayers to today. And so the good you do goes on the good side of the scales and your mistakes and omissions go on the other side of the scales for your whole lifetime. And at the end of life, God's going to take a look at this and see what the balance scales is like. And that will determine your destiny, either heaven, paradise, or hell. So which side of the scales is the most heavy? Where will I actually go when I die? Which side of the scales for David Schenck is the most heavy? The good or the bad? The failures or the successes? The angels know. Do I know? Do you know? No, we don't know. We don't know. There is no way to know. You see. So, so that's a Muslim answer to, to that question. What is the meaning of death? We don't know. Either heaven, paradise, or hell. But which one, we don't know. Because you never know which side of the scales is the heaviest. So that's the answer. That's the answer to that question. Okay. Uh, what about the final one? Uh, Forgiveness. How do we find forgiveness? So let's go and ask our Buddhist friend. How do you find forgiveness? Some time ago, I was in a Sangha. That's a Buddhist monastery. And uh, the monks were explaining Buddhism to us. The leader of the Sangha was an old man in his 90s, I should think. He came from Sri Lanka, a very pleasant old man. And we would ask questions, and he would glow, smile, very pious, delightful person. And he would say sometimes, I don't know the answer to that question. Next question. <laughs> and we would all laugh, and he would laugh. But he answered many of the questions. And then at the end of our conversation, I asked him this question. How do you find forgiveness? What did he say? He became very agitated. He said, forgiveness, there is no such thing as forgiveness. Forgiveness is a terrible idea. If you say to people that they are forgiven, then they will stop being moral people. They'll just keep on doing sin and wrong because they think they'll just be forgiven. They'll just be forgiven. He was very upset about that, which is the Buddhist answer. Hinduism, Hinduism says the same thing, that there is no forgiveness, you see. And so what I'm trying to say is that these three ultimate questions are always with us in cultures and societies around the world. But the answers that the religions give to these three ultimate questions are different. They're very different, you see. And so we don't say, we cannot say all religions are basically the same. No. They give very different answers to these three questions. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.